From everyone here at Cranberry Alarm, thank you to our sponsors. Hey guys, Cranberry Alarm, RI3D here. Here with our robot rattlesnake, um, right at the end of day three, right around noon. Our main goals of this robot was to be able to manipulate both game pieces and score them in every respective um, location. We have four major systems. We have one is the drivetrain, two, the pivot, three, the elevator system, and four, the gripper. Um, the total height of the robot during starting configuration is right around 53 inches. The overall size of the chassis is 26 by 28. That allows us to get onto the charge station with other alliances pretty well. And the overall weight of the robot is right around 73 pounds. In total, we're using right around um, six Neos and one pneumatic piston to do the entire control of the entire system. So moving on to the pivot, um, in order to pick up, manipulate, and store the cone and cube, um, we have this pivoting arm using a pulley, and it's got four main set points that we use. There's one set point that's on the ground. This allows us to pick up the cones. Once it's grabbed, we're able to raise the cone up to a scoring angle. And then if we want to stow the arm completely back in our frame, it can be raised up to a third position. All of this is achieved through uh, some pulleys from the Thrifty Elevator Kit. So you see it's attaching, uh, fixed to the arm here, goes to this pulley, and straight down to a motor that we've got stowed away at the bottom of the frame. This motor is a, it's a gearbox with a Neo, and this gives us encoder position control. So here's it going to the ground, up to the scoring, and finally up to the stowed position. Hey guys, continuing to elaborate on our elevator system. We are using the single stage Thrifty Elevator Kit. Um, it was given to us by our sponsor ThriftyBot. Um, we use this to extend out and score on the cones or cubes onto their mid or high nodes. Um, we actually have presets on the elevator so that it's all easily controlled. So we have the mid height, and we can go to high. And then we can come all the way back into stowed. And so here we're powering this entire lift off of a single Neo on a 12 to 1 gearbox. Now there's multiple options you can use for the gearbox. Here we're using a uh, sport gearbox. You can use a max planetary gearbox or a verse planetary gearbox. There's a lot of options that you can use here. Now one other note, um, so position, is that when we're, we're, when we're in our starting configuration, the gearboxes are actually outside of our frame perimeter. Now this is a problem that we encountered uh, late in our build and the possible solution to this would be moving the entire pivot point of the elevator forward about an inch and a half or two inches. Um, now due to our three day constraint we just didn't have enough time to solve this but this is, should be a relatively easy problem to solve. So to elaborate more here on our gripper system that we use to grab both the cone and the cube, um, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this by coming all the way down to the ground. So at this level, we can both grab the cone and the, uh, the cube. So here we're going to grab the cone. There it grabs it on nice and well. We're going to come up to our scoring height. And you can see when we extend out. And when we go to score, it drops it right there. Now we're going to go back down to the ground. And we're going to grab the cube. Now we're going to go up. Extend, and then score. And there we have it. And so now <clears throat> we're going to come uh, all the way up to our stowed position. So here we can take a closer look at the system and what's going on here. So here we're using a makeshift elevator system that we basically took the thrifty elevator blocks and we modified them a little bit by drilling out these threaded holes here and inserting a uh, shoulder bolt and connecting both bearing block, both bearings to this and tying into the other bearing blocks. That way we have a grip on both sides of the two by one. Then we use a piece of C-channel and polycarbonate to tie these two carriages together. And then on top of this, we tied the rope that is tied to this pneumatic piston, which goes around a pulley system. That way we can convert this force here into 90 degrees so that we can pull it straight. So then let's go ahead and pull this. 
So it's a little struggling right now while it's up like this. Oh, we're low on pressure. Um, but we use a circle tubing right here, which basically adds a, uh, the return feature. So whenever we extend the pneumatic piston back up, the arm will continue to open up. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see, it opens up pretty well. And that's how that works. And we add these barnacles right here, which actually come in the kit of parts, which we found that actually have a really, really good grab on the cones and the cubes. So we use this to basically get a bunch of extra grip and that's worked really well for us. Now that we're back to full pressure, we're gonna do a demonstration of how well our grip is on the cube and the cone. Um, one note, while grabbing this during our prototyping, we actually did pop the cone on two separate equations, uh, occasions, one with the intake wheels and one with the gripper strategy. Um, so something to look out for with, when you're designing your mechanism. Watch for any sharp objects, anything that might slice the cube. Um, just to be mindful of that. We're going to demonstrate this now. And you see we have a really nice hold on. Let's go ahead and go up. That things aren't going anywhere. Get this out of here. And we're going to do the cone now. Let's go and grab that. Let's go and go up. And you see you shake the robot. So it does come out when the robot does experience intense um, changes in momentum. However, uh, we do have a good enough grab on it that we can drive around the field the way we want to. So to wrap up with a few final notes, a um, few things we've changed about the robot. Uh, I'll start with one for the gripper. Um, I think the, it could grip the cones a little bit tighter and that could be easily solved by maybe grab, uh, grabbing the cones a little bit higher, adding something that has comes in a little bit closer so that way you grab onto the cones a little bit tighter. The other thing would be, uh, like we stated earlier, um, adjusting the motors so that they, this entire robot is legal in starting configuration just by adjusting the pivot in a little bit. Okay. Uh, one other thing that we would change or did change in the last few minutes, cameras are a really useful addition in order to see the cones and cubes across the field. Uh, riding them when they're far away is difficult. And uh, another thing sort of programmatically that we would change is to put more time into the PID tuning uh, for the position of the pivot and extension. Um, both of those were just very roughly tuned and you could get some very nice uh, like automated buttons. So button to go from uh, ground to grabbing and that scoring angle, those sorts of things which would make driving the robot a lot easier. All right, and now it's time to score high cubes until it pops. Uh, to be fair, this cube does have a couple patches on it already because we popped it during dusting, but super glue with gaffer tape seems to work pretty well.
expect soon to have a, us have a uh, technical document out with a uh, CAD and link to the GitHub, the technical document, which have detailed images, descriptions of how all the mechanisms work so that each and every one of you can really understand how this entire robot works. Uh, once again, thank you to our sponsors that have really made this all happen. Red Alert, a robotics parent organization, uh, Tiny Mild, uh, Andy Mark, and ThriftyBot. Thank you again so much.